Welcome to Whole Earth Hub's first presentation in its Heart Talk series. I am Diana Borges, founder of Whole Earth Hub, and we are excited to present to you the first Heart Talk. Discover four easy techniques to connect to the heart, mind, body, and spirit. But for this talk, we decided that it flowed better to not go heart, mind, body, spirit. We are going to present in the order of body, mind, heart, spirit. So our first presenter is going to be Deborah Myers, talking about the body, and then Marjorie Favusi, talking about the mind, and myself, talking about the heart, and then we're ending with Jan Cooker, talking about the spirit and how we can connect to all of it. After our talk, we will be opening up to a question and answer period. So if you have any questions, you can type in your question by going down to the bottom of the screen with your cursor, hit the icon for chat, and then go to the right of your screen at the bottom, and you can type in your question. You can also select if it's for any one of us or in, just in general to everyone. At the end of the video, we will be presenting to you information about our speakers and also more about Whole Earth Hub. So we invite you to stay throughout the whole video to see that. And the video is being recorded, so it will be available to you and others who are not able to be able to here tonight to watch on YouTube. So let's get started. I introduce to you, Deborah Myers. Hello there. It's good to see all of you. My name is Deborah Myers. I'm an acupressurist and Jin Shin Jitsu practitioner. Jin Shin Jitsu is an ancient form of Japanese acupressure. And it's all about recognizing that we walk around in a body that is our house. And as a house, it's really important to keep it clean. First, we have to get it clean. Then we keep it clean by vacuuming it out, getting rid of the dust bunnies and cobwebs. And we can easily do that by making use of these things called fingertips that we walk around with 24 seven. And as we utilize these fingertips on various points of our body, we can actually connect with the energy to help remind it to be in flow. Because guess what? It wants to be in flow. The body as rivers of energy want to consistently be in an open state, a good flowing current, helping everything in our body, physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually, get connected and be connected. It's like connecting the dots. You know those um, coloring books we used to do with the dots that are numbered and we draw the lines in between and we create a picture and then we have an opportunity to paint it or uh, color it, whatever the case may be we get the opportunity to finish the picture so we have a full canvas. That's what we're doing when we're walking around in this body and helping it experience balance and consistently feel the balance. Because when it's there, it will more easily give you messages that you can actually recognize as messages when something's going a little cattywampus. When your body says, hey, you need to take care of this before it becomes a project. I call things projects instead of problems because projects are a lot more fun to work with and have a beginning and an end. And when we're in that place of helping our bodies experience flow, we can actually be in a place of proactive movement, of helping our body say, I project get through from where I am to where I want to be. And that's why I love teaching self-help. Yeah, you could come to me and experience that Paul. Maybe pre-op, post-op. Technical issues helping the body experience that state of ease. Oops, I just found out my screen is freezing. This is not okay. Um, hold on a second. Let me see if I can change it up, okay? I'm gonna keep my fingers crossed. Okay, let me open up a door. 
see if that helps. So all of that said, and please keep my fingers crossed that it all goes well. When the body is in that state of balance and harmony, it's more easily able to do what we want to do and, and be there for whatever we're going to ask it to do. So what I want to show you tonight is how easily and effortlessly we can access that energy and make a difference in our lives, physically, mentally, and emotionally, and spiritually. So the very first thing I'd like to show you is how you can be in that place of breath. Because where there's breath flowing, there's energy flowing. Where there's energy flowing, there's breath flowing. And one of the first things you can do is to simply hold your upper arms. Just cross your arms like so, holding anywhere from your elbows on up. You're connecting with an energy balance point that's all about breath. Connecting with lungs, connecting with diaphragm, helping that body experience easy movement. So it's calm, so it's available to you with whatever you want to do, whether it's sitting at a desk, whether it's behind the steering wheel, whether it's out in the garden, whether it's doing any kind of sports activity, whether it's just being calm, resting, napping, wanting to sleep. And as we follow that place of breath, everything in our body is more available to us. So I'd like to show you another one. It's very simple. And if you hold right underneath your, finger, your collarbone, going right along, right beneath, and where your fingertips land, in, right in that triangular area, I want you to consider cupping the sternum. Doesn't matter which hand you do this with. You're gonna cup the sternum directly below that collarbone. When I work with kids, I'm calling it the magical clavicle because when we're there, we're helping the body experience the ease of receiving and the ease of letting go. The ease of receiving breath and the flow of energy and the ease of distributing it throughout our body. The ease of receiving nutrient and distributing it throughout our body. In conjunction with that, I'd love you to consider putting your fingertips of your other hand directly on your tummy below your navel, fingertips held in a vertical pattern. And when you're doing this, you're helping to open up all the throat and voice and neck and allowing not only breath to be there, but your voice to be there, your expression to be there for you. So when you do this, it helps your body experience space. So this is a really good one anytime you want extra calming, anytime you want to speak your truth, anytime you want to be when you're in front of a group or just one person and want to project your voice to be able to say what you want to say and be, be who you want to be. And off and on throughout the day, it's huge possibility for you to experience. And guess what? There's no such thing as too much self-help. You do this off and on throughout the day, no matter what. And your body's going to be more, it's going to be happier, it's going to be more receptive, and it's going to be more available. In fact, what I teach all my clients and all my students is a nine-step self-help acupressure flow that I call the daily clean your house flow. It's, like I said, nine steps. The first step is this one. The next step, is sitting on your hands with your palms up. And anytime you do that, you're connecting with an energy balance area that's all about vitality. So anytime you need that extra oomph, as my grandmother would have said, and giving yourself that space of like, well, it's almost like drinking a cup of coffee, but instead you sit on your hands, holding that area of your sit bones, and you give that self, yourself that extra boost and all that breath you brought into the body brings it to every cell of your being. These steps be, can be used individually, separately from each other, again, off and on throughout the day. Those are just the first two steps. The ninth step that I'd really like to share with you is the jumper cables. And that's just simply holding each thumb and finger one at a time, cupping the thumb like so, holding this for a couple good breaths. And then you go to your index finger, holding that for a couple good breaths. And when you're doing this, you're helping to balance all the energy that enters and exits your body. What a fantastic, easy way to take care of you. This, by the way, is all about learning how to be partners with your own bodies. And when you do this, not only you're helping to balance all the energy 
on top of that, you're balancing all emotions. And I'm just not saying emotions are bad because that's what helps us be human. But it's when the emotions get really big and take our breath, uh, breath away or take us out of the ability to move, move forward that all of a sudden those emotions are not there for our best interests. So as we do this, we help get rid of worry fast. I'm on to the next hand. You hold the thumb to let go of worry. And a body that is not experiencing worry is one that's just ready to be what you want to be, to be in the moment, to be in the now, to be present. Because worry takes you out of present. It takes you stuck into the past. And then it's get rid of worry fast. F-A-S-T. You hold the index finger to let go of fear. And a body that doesn't have fear is one that has safety and security. A state of where your whole um, uh, first and second chakra areas, that midline area is all about being in a state of balance and being available to keep you with a firm foundation. So you let go of fear. It's an important emotion, but it can get in your way. And then get let go of the A, which is anger, frustration, irritation. I had a, a five-year-old who informed me that if he didn't feel irritation, he wouldn't feel rage. He followed that progression. That's pretty big. And then the S is for sadness or grief. Another important emotion it helps us recognize what what we've lost what we're missing, what maybe needs to feel replaced. And it's an important one, but if it takes your breath away, it's going to hold you in place, hold you stuck. In fact, I use a word called stuckness. It's my word that says when things aren't moving and that's in that state, it's, you're, it's like your own worst enemy in a way. And then the T is the trying to's. Trying too hard, trying too much, trying to do it all, that place of efforting that's no longer a verb when it becomes a description of how we are. And efforting can really do it in. So when we jump or cable, and you can do it again off and on throughout the day, you're in that place of ease. And anyone can do that. I teach it to children. In fact, last Thursday, I did a, uh, I was with the kids at Boys and Girls Club. And a little nine-year-old um, said, as we're doing this, he goes, well, I want to just know which one is the happy one. And I said, all of them are. Especially balancing this finger. Because where there is no sadness, there is joy, laughter, and happiness. And there's love. So, but all of them put together makes this body so happy. Another one I want to share with you that's really important um, because our, we, we live in an area where there's a lot of allergies. And usually we're through them by now. Would you agree? But we're stuck in them this season. And there's a very, very simple one you can do. So this one is going to be extremely beneficial, as is this one. But there's another one I want to show you. And that's simply holding one hand on the outside of your neck, same side. So if I'm holding left hand on left side of neck, and my right hand is starting at the top of the head, close to the center line, but on the right side. And I'm going to do it quickly. I'd suggest you do it slow, but when you start here and then go just into the hairline, and literally you're following the sinuses. Feel that? And then the next one is the forehead, again on the right side of that center line, if you are doing the right hand being the traveling hand. And then we're at the inside of the eyebrow, Beautiful. You can see how this is going to be really beneficial for tired eyes, sore eyes, itchy eyes. And then we go just below the cheekbone. In fact, I like putting my ring finger right there in that notch that the nostril and cheekbone bring together and then follow the curvature of the cheek. So you can see why this is also going to help with ear pressure. A lot of allergies this year are affecting people's sense of balance taking you people into dizzy, but also affecting ear pressure. And then the last step in this one is, again, right in that point that I showed you before, right in that notch. And when we do this, it's six simple steps. And you only have to do one side for it to really work. But if it's working, 
why not do the other side, especially in their throat, if you're in the throes of having symptom. And by the way, the symptom of allergies is simply the body's reaction to potential allergens because the immune system is suppressed. When you do this kind of energy work, you're helping build immune, endocrine, and adrenal systems, helping them be strong, helping them give you a really firm foundation. And that is my vision for you as, and I hope the gift I've given you tonight is how to help your body experience that state of firm foundation. So everything's ready for you, for anything you want to do. So imagine walking around in a body that's that kind of balance. So you can go on that hike you want to go on. So you can go on that place of ease that you want to go to. You can work in the garden. You can go golf. You can go swimming. You can do anything you want to do when your body is in a state of cooperation. Because when you become a partner with your own body, you are helping experience cooperation. So you can tell I love teaching this. And I do ongoing workshops. I have level one, level two mastery classes. I have introduction workshops off and on. I love working with kids. I've created a program for kids in schools, did an animation video of, with uh, companion eBooks. Go to my website at debramyerswellness.com and see the first 90 seconds of the video I created of the animated video of the daily clean your house flow. I'd love to have you check it out. Let me know what you think. It's a very simple process to go ahead and get that into your computer screen. A lot of adults are getting in because it's a good reminder. And then see what else we can do. I also do an individual sessions and I'd love to have you experience that. So my next person on the list, I'm very pleased to announce that Marjorie Favuzzi has a technique that's super beautiful and valuable to help you get out of your own way. She's a tapping expert. So I'd love to have Marjorie come on over and have fun listening to her. It's been a joy being with you. Hi there, I'm Marjorie Favuzzi. And I am a EFT, which stands for Emotional Freedom Technique tapping practitioner and also matrix re-imprinting. My business is Success in Hand because right here, just as Deborah was showing you, your fingers have a lot of power in them and they can touch those energy meridians to really realign your energy, your thoughts, your brain, your body, and that's what we're going to be talking about. So long ago, I connected with this truth and I discovered a series of steps that can really help you turn I can't into I can. And whether that's I can't juggle all this stuff, I have way too much to do, or it is I just can't get over this feeling. Deborah showed you some really nice techniques for there. What I'm going to show you is going to be working with the brain and actually creating new pathways of thought. They found that the brain is much more elastic than they knew. And so it actually creates um, grooves in your brain. The grooves that are the deepest are those ones that are from the inner critic, from those, those critical messages that we get, those doubts, those things that kind of shoot us down. And that's not, your brain isn't faulty. There's 27,000 people in 90 different countries that have been studied. We all have a form of this because our brain is hardwired for survival. And it thinks that it's doing you a favor by bringing all this forward and usually not, right? So it's kind of like having a record. When you had the old LPs that you put on a record player and when you put the needle down on a particular groove, it would play the same song every time. Well, we have those grooves, those pathways of thought in our brain. And because they are so well-worn, they are so deep, that those thoughts just go down immediately. There's a way to work with it so that you can be the master of your brain and not the puppet, not let the brain run away with you. So let me tell you a little bit about how the brain experiences time. First of all, we have three brains. I don't know if you knew that. We have a brain in our head, we have a brain in our heart, we have a brain in our gut. 
and all of them have this, they work a little bit independently, but then they're in conjunction as well. So the way the brains experience time is that all time is happening at once. That means when you think about something that was uh, embarrassing, maybe it happened 20 years ago or more, and you're really thinking about it, and all of a sudden you find yourself blushing, the brain has been sending down chemicals to make you blush because it thinks that it's happening again. So when we have things that haven't gone well in our lives, traumas, car accidents, people not respecting us, feeling really embarrassed or ashamed, tend to have those things come up again. And guess what? The brain thinks it's happening again. So without meaning to at all, we re-traumatize ourselves. And who needs that, right? So there's a simple way that you can work with this. You also need to know that this part of the brain isn't connected to words. It's the very oldest. It's that lizard brain. And still, animals still have it. You know, it's that fight or flight. We've got to make an action right now to be safe. That's where our anxieties come up and our stress comes up and our shame and our really wanting to get out of our skin. This part of the brain, because it is so old, it was formed before words ever developed. So when we try to work on these things in therapy, you know, with other modalities where we're just talking about it, what happens is that part of the brain doesn't recognize it fully because that part of the brain, the amygdala, the very oldest part of the brain, is connected to sensations, feelings, and pictures which is why just talking doesn't always cut it. In fact, people come into my office often and say, why is this up again? I have worked on this in therapy. And there's nothing wrong with therapy. Therapy is a good thing to do. It just may not get to the root of it, so it keeps coming up and up. And it becomes our perceptual filter. And because the brain doesn't know that the past is the past and the present is right here, the brain brings forward the past and you have all the emotional load as if everything was happening right now. Except that there's a way to work with it to let that brain know that this event is over. It doesn't have to continue to inform your brain, to inform your present. And then things are not quite as big a deal. In fact, you can see your way through them. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about tapping. Tapping, you're tapping on the energy meridians. And Deborah was talking about the energy meridians and how they are currents. These meridians actually affect that part of the brain that's holding all of these memories that have been frozen in time and keep kind of haunting you. And nobody needs that. So what we're doing is we're tapping on the energy meridians and it sends a neurological signal to the brain to actually let it know, oh, something's happening. I can feel it. And we're pairing up statements with it to let the brain know that you're paying attention. So at first you're talking about the problematic things. Just need to let it know you're paying attention because it's survival oriented and it's very fear-based. And I think of fear as standing for false evidence appearing real. While we're tapping, we're saying different things to let the brain know you're paying attention. And then also, as your emotional load, your distress, your stress over this particular thought or behavior or incident, we're actually allowing it to get more and more positive information in there. So we're tapping here on the karate chop point, top of the head, eyebrow point, outside of the eyes, under the eyes, under the nose, under the lip, under the collarbone, under your arm, and then both sides of your wrist. So I'm just going to lead you on a little bit of a tapping demonstration. This is quick. So you might have some, some real breakthrough, and you might need more than this because this is just a demonstration. But let's just have a little fun with it. Okay. We're going to focus on empowerment 
and we're going to focus on taking some of the procrastination or the overwhelm of having to juggle things all the time. And that's what we just use for our demonstration. So as we're tapping, you can tap along with me and repeat what I say. If you were in an individual session with me or in one of my empowerment series, we would be customizing this to what your issues are. But for now, we'll just use the statements that I say. Even though I'm so busy and I can't possibly juggle everything on my plate, I still deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I get so tired trying to do everything and sometimes I just want to do what's easier, I still deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I don't think I'm ever going to get all this done and sometimes I just give up hope. I still deeply and completely accept myself. Okay, so now we're going to go to the top of the head and we're going to repeat. Even though I lose my motivation and focus that I need, and then the eyebrow point, and that really gets in the way of me getting things done, and the outside of the eye, I just don't think I'll ever be able to get it all done. And under the eye, sometimes I'm not even motivated to start it. And under the nose, but then I feel badly about myself. And under the lip, I don't need all of this stuff at once. Under the collarbone, maybe I don't have to do it all at once. Under the arm, sometimes I have a hard time figuring out which to do first one side of the wrist. Maybe there's an easier way on the other side of the wrist. I'd like to find an easier way. Let's do another round. Ah. If I only had to juggle just a little less on the eyebrow point, because it doesn't feel like they ever get it all done. The outside of the eyes. But I get some of it done under the eyes. Some of the time, under the nose. Sometimes I don't want to, under the lip. But I found if I just start, then I get engaged with it, under the collarbone. And then I'm more likely to do it, under the arm. It still is a lot, outside the wrist. Why do I have to have so much so often? Inside the wrist. Maybe this tapping will help. I don't know, it feels pretty weird, but it might just help. Okay, I want you to take a deep breath in and out. And if you were right in front of me, I would say, okay. So if you started out on a scale of zero to 10, maybe you had so much anxiety, you were up at an eight. So 10 being the worst anxiety ever, or frustration, or even procrastination, and zero being, we're not even talking about it. Maybe you were an eight. And then we do our first round of tapping. And I ask you, did anything come up? Often there's an aha moment, or another memory comes up. So we add that in. And by the end of the first round, maybe you're down at a four. And so I'll say, what's still there? What's still there in that four? Well, Hmm. I really feel badly about myself when I get this, this happens. I fall into this pattern. It's an old pattern. I've tried to change it before. I just don't know if it's possible. So I said, okay, let's do some tapping around that. Even though I have this old pattern and I don't know if I'm going to be able to change it, I still deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm really tired of it and I've tried other things before. I still deeply and completely accept myself. Even though I'm not even sure if this tapping thing is going to work. I still deeply and completely accept myself. I'm not sure if this is going to work. I've tried other things before. But I'm ready to try anything now. I'm really sick of feeling like this. It's such an old pattern. Why should I feel like this anyway? 
I don't deserve to feel like this. Maybe I'm feeling a little better. Maybe I don't have to do it all at once. In fact, I only can do one thing at a time. I can't do six things at a time. So I think I'm gonna focus on that one thing. And when I get done with it, it feels pretty good. I can put that on my success log. And then I can try again. And just starting really helps. And maybe this tapping is working after all. I'm ready to do anything. So I'm giving it a try. Now I'd ask, how are you feeling? And you'd say, well, you know, I think I'm down around one. I, I'm feeling better about it. I don't know why. Well, why is because we're giving those neurological signals to the brain to let it know it can let go. So we do a positive round. We'll just do a quick one. So even though I haven't gotten this all worked out yet, I think I could do one thing at a time. I am forgiving myself for not getting everything done. Even though I still need more focus, I think I could get some extra sleep, which would really help me. And then I have more energy for it. Even though I'm not sure if I really want to do all this stuff, this tapping is kind of getting me motivated. And maybe it'll even be easier. And then we'd go down through, oh, I think I'll forgive myself if I don't get it all done. Because I only can do one thing at a time. And if I need more energy, I'll just get more sleep. Maybe I'll even get more motivated. That'll give me a little bit more focus. Maybe it'll be easier. Who knew that this tapping stuff could work? I think I'm going to try it now. I think I'm going to go forward, and what I get done is good enough. Now, good enough is another one of those things we end up tapping on. But that was just a quick trip for you to see and see that it works. In fact, science has proven that tapping on your en energy meridians sends a neurological signal to the brain to let it know that that frustration is over so you can move forward. It's incredibly effective. And new pathways are created so that you now have a new track that the thought can go down. You don't have to stay stuck on the old thing. I'm Marjorie Fabuzzi with Success in Hand. And this has just been a little bit of a demonstration on tapping. I love working with people. I'm so honored to do this life-changing work. In fact, I have empowerment groups that I have online and both in person in my office in, in Santa Rosa. I work with individuals all over the country and even in my office in Santa Rosa. And I also do staff trainings and go out and do speaking events. And I'd love to come do something for you. Just let me know and go to my website, successinhand.com. You'll get more information about tapping, more information how you can work with me, and even sign up for a free 30-minute discovery call just to address your particular needs so that we can continue the effect really to you. So I'm so thankful to be here as part of this club today. And now I'm going to be introducing you next to Jan Cooker. Nope. Jan is, uh, nope, sorry, I'm sorry. Jan Cooker's going to go last. <laughs> All right, Diana Borges is going to be next. She's an amazing practitioner. She works with the heart. She connects you to the greater universe. And it is an amazing process, and I'm so honored to be with you. So take it away, Diana. Our hearts have much strength and knowledge for us. But as a society, we have lost respect, compassion, and love for ourselves. Um, and if you're wondering, what makes me qualified to talk about the heart? Well, besides being a certified life purpose coach and energy healer in multiple modalities, including uh, heart math at heart facilitate, facilitator and coming up with my own modality called heart access, mainly because I've been there. I was disconnected from my own heart for a majority of my life. 
um, a childhood trauma uh, caused me to be disconnected from myself. And it wasn't until I was uh, about 10 years ago, actually started working on me and learned that because I was disconnected from my own heart, I wasn't living. You know, um, I wasn't experiencing life to its fullest. And I understand how difficult it is for most people to reconnect to their hearts, to go past the barriers that are our protections. But when we can do that, we open doors to amazing things. So some things that happen when we're um, very young from zero to seven years is when we're in theta brainwave state and we absorb all these energies. Uh, it doesn't even have to happen to us. It can be in the house, um, happening to siblings, uh, stories that aren't ours, our peers, everything that we're told. These reside in our subconscious and in ourselves and they form patterns throughout our life. And a lot of the patterns, they just start to reinforce those beliefs. But there are ways to change those beliefs, which also helps you open up your heart. So when we are connected to our hearts and to our souls, we are amazing beings and we are extremely powerful. And that is my goal to help everyone to find and regain their own strength and power. The technique I'm gonna show you is gonna start with heart mass quick coherence technique. And that is gonna bring the heart and the brain into coherence heartmath.org if you have it to look them up um, i highly suggest they're an amazing organization that are doing scientific studies on the heart and they're actually doing studies too that are um, correlating earth's magnetic fields with um, our energy fields and how it impacts us they uh, work on creating global coherence for the planet also so when we do our technique we're going to start with the heart brain coherence, which I will walk you through. And then we're gonna move into a technique that I've come up with um, to synchronize the brain. And when we, our brains are synchronized, that's when we're also able to um, change the beliefs because beliefs stay on our con subconscious until we make repetitive actions to change those, or we do some hypnosis or some energy work that actually changes it. It takes an effort. We can't just consciously say, you know, I'm going to stop smoking. It doesn't happen because those energies are down on a deeper level that we're not accesses, accessing from the conscious level, um, which we primarily run on our subconscious. So the technique will go into um, synchronizing the brain, and then once there, we're gonna expand into the universe, our energy, because we are energetic light beings and you're gonna experience who you truly are. So I wanna let you know that when I'm guiding you, I may be looking away, I may close my eyes. It's not that I'm disconnecting from you, it's actually a way for me to connect to you even more on an energetic level. And I invite you to actually close your eyes when we're doing it anyway, because then you're going inside internal and not distracted by this outside world. Because the answers that we're looking for are not gonna be out there or in the head. We're gonna be going into the heart and into our intuition. So let's get started. And I invite you all to close your eyes to start with and settle into your body. So if you can start by taking some deep breaths and feel your lungs expand. And as you exhale, just set the intent to release everything that's not for your greatest good. I invite you now to feel your physical heart within your chest. Just the presence of the heart, the beating of the heart. There. 
We're going to start heart math's quick coherence technique now. And that begins by slowing your breathing down. I want you to vision inhaling into your hearts. And you're going to inhale to about the count of five, slow count. So we inhale one, two, three, four, five. Hold for two counts. Exhale for five, hold for two. So just visualize that pace into your heart, the air coming in. You can place your hand over your chest area near your heart because our awareness goes to the area that we're touched on the body. And this is gonna slow the heart down and bring your focus into the heart. Good. And the next step is going to put a regenerative feeling into the heart. And that's care, caring, appreciation, or gratitude. And Greg Braden adds compassion to that, which works for me most of the time. So I invite you to put one of those four in there. Caring, gratitude, appreciation. Caring, gratitude, appreciation, compassion into the heart. And it's a physical feeling that you're going to be putting into the heart. If you need to think of a pet, a person, place that generates those feelings and just put that vision into your heart. And that's how simple this technique is. You breathe into the heart at the slow pace and you have the physical feeling in the heart. And heart math says five minutes a day is gonna bring your heart and brain into coherence. And that's a 0.1 Hertz frequency that generates between the heart and brain. And they sync together as one organ. And when we're in coherence, we have improved performance, increased intuition, self-healing, and a lot of amazing things that we're able to do. HeartMath teaches this technique to executives, to athletes for self-improvement. It's something that has been scientifically proven to help. So feel that, feel the heart. Okay. We're gonna move into the brain now. So I invite you to put your awareness into the right half of your brain. Just feel that portion of the brain. Now move your awareness over to the left half of the brain and just feel it. Now move the awareness to the back of the brain near the spine. Good. 
good. Now to the front. Now put your awareness into the entire brain, the whole brain, and feel it. Feel the cells, feel the atoms within. And I invite you to make the most appropriate neurological connections for your highest good. to download from the divine, the universe, that which is most appropriate for your highest good, for your evolutionary path and your purpose here. And allow those energies to reside on your cells and your subconscious consciousness and anywhere else that's appropriate for you. Replacing those old programs that don't serve you. The stories, illusions that weren't even yours. Allowing them to unfold as most appropriate for you. Now feel the heart's energy again. And I invite you to put within your heart unconditional love, compassion, and patience for yourself. Because it starts with each and every one of us. It's only after we take care of ourselves can those energies genuinely overflow to our world. Feel the love for you, the understanding for yourself. Now allow your heart's energy to flow throughout your body. down to every cell, nurturing. I invite you to allow your heart's energy to flow past your body into your energy field. Let it expand even further. Feel the energetic portion of you. Allow the heart to expand even farther. Feel the collective consciousness, the love around. And I invite you now to start bringing your energies back. Feel the heart's energy again. Feel the physical heart.
And as you take some deep breaths, I'm going to ground you, connect you to earth. Okay, when you're ready, go ahead and open your eyes. So what we just did was reconnect to the heart and the soul the energetic portion of us. Um, the first part, heart mass technique, the slow breathing and visualizing the uh, compassion, appreciation, gratitude, or caring, you can do on your own at home. Uh, it's very simple. And if you want a video, you can look up, uh, Greg Braden has one on YouTube, and, and HeartMath also has one on there. If you just search the HeartMath Quick Coherence Technique, and they will walk you through that. Or this video will be available on YouTube um, to help you walk through. Um, if you're interested in um, the, what the heart access is, which the um, brain synchronization was part of that, um, contact me um, for any questions and I will help you walk through that. I am now going to turn this over to Jan Cooker. Hi, uh, my name is Jan Cooker and I'm a psychic medium. I've been doing this work for more than 25 years and I love, 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 love what I do. So I hope any information that I give you will be helpful to you uh, that you can use in the future. And I have to uh, share a really fun story. I talk with people who've crossed over and um, uh, a young lady, uh, I did a reading four or five months ago and her mother, who was 80 some odd years old, kept telling her daughter, please, 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 Go clean out the chest of drawers. Go clean out the chest of drawers. And she said it once, she said it five times. And I just got an, uh, an email from her and she said, she cleaned out the chest of drawers and she found a wallet in there that had a lot of money. So, um, you know, when you have these readings, you really need to listen what your loved ones are saying on the other side. So if you need to clean out a drawer, maybe you'll discover some money or something. Um, I wanted to tell you that I work with guides and angels and they are amazing, amazing people to work with, amazing spirits, and they want to help you out. They don't want to make your life really tough. They want to make your life more easy. So why I'm telling you that is because most all of us have chosen a really tough life to experience. Maybe you kissed a lot of toads or toadettes in your life. Maybe you had bosses that, you know, have been really horrible to you. Why in the world would I sign up to have that? Why in the world is this happening to me over and over and over again? Well, a lot of times when we are in our heavenly suit, we make the agreement that, you know, maybe I wasn't a, such a nice person in the last lifetime and I need to experience how I mistreated people in the previous life. And we've all done it. There's no one innocent from this at all. So what I am saying to you, my friend, is that when you wake up one morning and say, I am done with this, whatever it may be, you know, being in poverty consciousness and you decided you wanted to know what it's like to be in abundance, you can. The angels love helping you out. You don't have to suffer your entire lifetime from this. So I would say for you is that you can go on my website, Jan, K-U-C-K-E-R.com, and look for your soul's agreement, changing your soul's agreement. Because I have to tell you, your angels and guides don't want you to have a whole lifetime of um, being beat down to a pulp, being experiencing really difficult situations. They want you to know what it felt like, you know, in your past life and some of this lifetime, but not your whole life, not your whole life. So begin to wake up and say, 
to your guidance, to your angels. I am done with this. I am tired of kissing all the toads and toadettes out there. I want to find a partner that is really loving to me, that treats me with respect, treats me with kindness, and um, then believe it. And the main part of it is believing it, that you deserve it. So you can use Marjorie's tapping, Diana's work, hard work, or even Deb Meyer's, her Jin Shin Jitsu. Any of that to change your subconscious mind into believing differently. And the subconscious mind, once you shift it, thinks your life has always, always been that way. Well, wouldn't that be absolutely wonderful to experience what it's like to have extra money after you paid your pg e bill and your rent and all of that. And you could go out to dinner without even thinking of spending whatever you want to spend for dinner. That would be extraordinary. So I have some angels that I love working with. I love working with the angels of miracles and magic. And it's a band of angels. You don't need to know how many. Just know that, you know, 10 million people can use them at once. And, and they can give them the same miracles and magic that Joey over here had or Susie over here had or even you. So you have to put it out to the world, not in an intentional, I, 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 I'm begging you, please, 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 please. They don't listen to that. Just step into your self-confidence. And that's where all of these ladies that was previously uh, working and telling you how that, that's letting you step into your self-confidence and let go of the, ah, the fear factor. So talk to your angels in your head talk to them out loud. They love helping you. They want you to have great joy. They want you to have a joy-filled life. Wouldn't that be amazing? So another angel that you can call on is uh, one, uh, Wanda the Wonder Girl. She creates miracles, no task too big, too small. Just ask her to create your miracle. And always, when you're working with your angels and guides, say thank you. I really, really appreciate this. Say thank you, thank you. And for the, those of you who are wanting to have love in your life, call on the angels of romance. The angels of romance are amazing. I mean, really amazing when you believe that you deserve it, that you deserve to have a partner that treats you with kindness, with gentleness, with respect, who is a non-violent person, you know, whether it's yelling, hitting, whatever. You are not meant to experience this. I promise you, you are not. So find the courage to stop the process. It's really important to do that. And lastly, those of you who are creative, there are angels out there for that. The angels of creativity. Oh, wow. Now, what do you mean creativity? Creativity could be that you become an artist, you can make jewelry, you can even create a beautiful garden that when you walk in, you feel like, wow, you know, I just want to rest here. I want to be here. So call on them. They love to help you discover and enhance your creativity. Wouldn't that be marvelous? Those of you who are woodworkers, um, those of you who are, are uh, people who work with bricks and do all that kind of beautiful things or even creating driveways, there are ways now that you can create amazing artistic work. So you don't necessarily have to be someone who draws. It's just the artist inside that lets you be creative in ways that others haven't been able to do. So that makes you unique, wonderful, and special. So if you are ready to begin a new chapter in your life, I urge you, I urge you sincerely, release your past, release your old story. When you keep holding on to the old story, spirit believes that, well, that's what that person said they want. They don't want to let go of it. 
and you really need to start moving forward, creating a new story, creating a new way of living, loving, and being. Wouldn't that be marvelous? Now, some of us have had really horrific bosses in our life. And oh my gosh, what do we do with an ogre, you know, for that? If you go onto my website, Jan, K U C K E R dot com, look for the honey jar. I tell you, it absolutely works. I had a group of ladies that were in the Concord area and they called their boss the Wicked Witch and just made their life absolutely horrible, horrible. So they did the honey jar. They wrote the name on the front of the paper, flipped it over, wrote the, the boss's name on the paper and what they wanted from that boss. Believe me, it can work in two days or two weeks. I don't know how it works. I don't care. I just know it works. So you write what you want done, you know, uh, better, being treated better, better pay, etc. It was so successful with those girls that the boss came in and start, brought donuts in, and she'd never done that. And they started treating each other better. So they got very inventive and they decided that they wanted to put their deposit slips to their bank account in there to get extra money. So they all put it in there, they folded it all up. And now with the boss, I would do a different jar of honey versus the deposit slips. Absolutely, because there's two different things going on here. Then you pour honey over the top of it and you ask for sweetness and light, L-I-G-H-T, and you want this to be blessed. It works, it works, it works. One of the girls um, got a $700 check from putting the deposit from somewhere. She had no idea where it came from. So it works. Believe in the magic. Believe in your intuition. Believe, because it's opening up and haven't you ever gotten a, like a, a, a gut instinct that you said, man, I shouldn't travel this way because it just doesn't feel right. And then later to find out that there was an accident there, listen to your intuition. I've been teaching intuition classes for a long time and people, when they listen to it, it really expands their life. It expands the way they believe, it expands on how they receive things and expands on how people treat you differently because you're putting out a different energy. Haven't you walked into a room and you have seen someone and you just go, oh, I just don't want to deal with that person and you've never spoken to them at all, but yet there's an energy there. That is the vibe you're getting from intuition. Now, have you walked in a room and said, I want to know that person over there. I don't know that person from Adam. And then you find out that you really have a good connection. Most likely you've met them in a past lifetime. So we want to get to the fact that um, loved ones have crossed over. You know, people ask about this all the time because it's one of the fortes that I love doing is talking to loved ones who cross. I absolutely want to tell you that if you have a loved one who's taken their own life, they do, they absolutely do make it in the pearly gates of heaven. They make it in there because it's one moment in their life that a gray cloud came over their head and they couldn't handle the energy anymore. So say you have a grandmother who's passed and she wasn't capable of walking properly at the end of her life. The minute, or maybe you had a, a grandfather who has Alzheimer's and he wasn't thinking clearly, the minute someone passes and they pop out of the body and it's an energy pop, um, they're set back to normal. People often ask, how are they doing on the other side? Well, someone who couldn't walk on this lifetime, you know, is dancing, you know, dancing and having a great time. And, you know, someone who's had Alzheimer's, they're functioning and they're doing fabulously. So I just want to know, let you know that when someone crosses, they are come back to make sure you're okay and they really want to help you out. So you can ask, you know, your favorite uncle who passed or your auntie who passed or whoever it is, I need help with this. 
can you make it happen for me? And you always add, for my greatest and highest good, always. Because we humans think of the moment where God's spirit and the angels think of a lifetime. So don't we want to experience a beautiful lifetime? Absolutely. So just wanted to tell you that if you would like to change, you know, anything in your, in your life, go in and change your soul's contract. It works, it works, it works. And then you step into the knowingness that it's going to happen for me. Jan Cooker on the Wings of Angels. I'm in Santa Rosa. Give me a call at 707-579-4809. And I would love to chat with you. Have a beautiful angelic day. Oh, are you there, my dear? Yes. Okay. Well, thank you, Jan. You're and we are now at the point where we are opening up to any questions. So if anyone has any questions, you can type it in. Um, if you're wondering why heart, mind, body, spirit, we all talked about that. It's because we want to help you connect to your entire being. We want to help you understand who you truly are to believe in yourself more trust in yourself more and to understand that you know there is a bigger picture that unfolds for us you know we um get wrapped up in a lot of things and we can't see really what's going on but maybe down the road you can look back and you see how those events helped you to progress forward to learn what you're here for and to grow evolve okay so it doesn't look like there are any questions boy i guess we did such a fabulous job there's no questions <laughs> oops i would like to add a few comments if i might can you hear me I'm, yes i'm unable to type anything oh there hit chat at the bottom chat right next to the right of the green uh the green chair yeah you have to hit the chat icon and then to the right there's a you can chat go ahead deb go ahead and, and okay well another idea for um for him is to go ahead i believe it's jack who was talking is if if somebody isn't having the ability to type it in for whatever reason maybe we can take it as a verbal question yeah. yeah, we will go ahead and we'll do that after. So what I wanted to comment on um, from all of us, if I may, is that the body is such an amazing vehicle for us to walk around in and be on this earthly plane. And there are so many modalities out there that we can, that are available to us. All we need to do is go searching. And one of our main purposes on being here tonight was to allow you, we hope, to recognize that these are four choices. There's many. And I hope you discovered that with Jin Shin Jitsu, an ancient form of Japanese acupressure, with tapping via Marjorie's information, via Diana with her amazing um, heart uh, journey, and Jan with her beautiful way of connecting with spirit, we can access the energy within us. I had the opportunity last Thursday, like I said earlier, to be with a group of 100 plus kids. And what really transpired was their realization that they could make a difference in their own bodies. And if we can start with our children early on, we are going to make such a huge difference in this world. So as we make a difference with ourselves and with yourself and with those around you, we are helping our planet earth. We're plant helping our communities. We're helping our households, giving yourself the opportunity to be who you want to be and do what you want to do. And I wish that for all of you. It appears that we have some questions. 
So I would like to answer the one is, what's the best way for Susan to find your purpose in your life? I would say is to find the passion that you absolutely love. Whether it's walking dogs or whether it's helping a senior citizen or whatever, from that doing something that you love will help you find your purpose in life because you have made a difference to this and this and this. So finding your purpose is really great that way. Do you guys have anything? I'd like to add just as you are branching out and you are really discovering your passion, if your head is telling you, uh-huh, yeah, right, who are you to do this? It's very common. It's called the imposter syndrome. And it's a way that the brain tries to keep you in the familiar, which may be stuck. So that's a time that ha tapping can really help you open up, let go of the criticisms, let go of the fears, and open up to that purpose. So it works very well for that. And for me, the, you know, the answers would be in the heart. Our heart knows our truth. And when we can access and live our truth, then um, things flow much easier. We're in the flow of what the universe is helping us to do also. Yeah. And if I may piggyback on that, it's when our bodies, when we give the, a chance to our bodies to experience that space of balance and harmony, of ease, of comfort, all sorts of possibilities can take place. But first we have to give ourselves that place of calm, of ease, of breath. And then we actually allow our bodies the possibility to step into the future. When we create a state of balance, we will more easily bring to us what we want to receive. There's an energy balance point right at our mid back at our kidney area. And just even holding that area, that happens to be the controller of our destiny. And when we experience the balance there, which we can also access when I taught you this one, is all about discover that balance and you will draw balance to you. It's that whole thing of what you want, you will create. You will des have desire, you will create. Be in that moment, be in the present, be in the now, and anything's possible. Thanks, Dave. Um, I don't see any other questions. Um, so I am going to right now share with you some information, the wrong information one. Um, there. So this is information about our speakers. Uh, feel free to contact any of us with questions to set up a session or check out our website. So for me, my website is borgesexperience.com. You can contact me at diana at Borges Experience. Deb's is successinhand.com. Nope, that's Marjorie. Uh, Marjorie, sorry. Marjorie is successinhand.com. Uh, Marjorie at successinhand.com to contact her. Deb's is debramyerswellness.com. At Deborah at debramyerswellness.com. And Jan is jancooker.com. Wings of Angels at jancooker. Dot com. And we are open to, um, to answer any questions, anything at all. Just email us and we would love to share uh, more information with you. We're going to be taking this series even further. Um, we're going to be having guest presenters. I know that um, I'm going to be doing a half hour segment and I think each of us actually is so that you can get a little bit more of what we have to offer. We can go a little bit more in depth. And then you, know, you can always contact each of us for uh, you know, a discovery session. So you can figure out if this is for you. You know, No one perfect modality for everybody, but what we have offered you here today is really universally appreciated. It's really um, effective. And so come experience more. Yes. For our next uh, offering online. Yes. Okay. In fact, um, Jinshin Jitsu, for instance, is being used in hospitals across the country and actually across the world. Acupressure, that's a Japanese modality. Acupressure as a Chinese modality is the very same information, but just done in a little bit different way. All that said, 
if you're not in this locality in Sonoma County, search out what's available to you and also access each what whoever you might want to via our emails or phone call phone numbers and we will reach out to you there's a question on here um will there be a replay uh diana will you please answer that yes um once we uh, i'm actually going to go into whole earth hubs and information more information so um let me do that now So I uh, started Whole Earth Hub with the mission to help strengthen the connection of all, expand global coherence, and assist with what is most appropriate for the highest good. Um, I wanted also to help humans reconnect to themselves and understand how our actions impact ourselves, each other, and the planet. And that's part of what the Heart Talks series is about. Uh, the next heart talk has not been scheduled yet, but there will be ongoing heart talks. And um, if you want to get on an email list to find out when the heart talks are, please email me at diana at gorgeousexperience.com. Also, uh, we offer meditations through Whole Earth Hub, and I can, um, if you get on the list, you'll be notified of those. Or if you just go to Whole Earth Hub Facebook page, you like that, all of those are posted on there also. There is a uh, earthly meditation scheduled for July 9th at 6.30. They're done by phone through uh, freeconferencecall.com. And those that is uh, listed on Whole Earth Hub already. And, um, but if you email me, I can give you that information. And I want to open it up to anyone who wants to participate in um, uh, a heart talk or the earthly, uh, the earth talks. The earth talks are gonna be more um, focused on environmental issues and um, geology. I'm also a geologist, so that's why the, the geology side of the uh, earth talks. And there is another question here. So Jan, can you tell us the first name of the spirit working with me the most at this time? Oh, well, um, Jack, it, it feels like a masculine energy and he's been with you like three lifetimes. And um, he's, he's kind of, he's lays back a little bit, but when he wants to get your attention, he really um, almost bangs something. So pay attention to that. And his name is Heath, H-E-A-T-H. -E, he goes by any name you want to give him, but right now he's just saying his name is Heath. So work with him. He's a great guide for you. And then there's a question on um, if there's going to be a replay. Yes, this is being recorded, and it will be put on YouTube. And there will be links put on um, Facebook on Whole Earth Hub also. And um, I assume all of the speakers also will probably put a, a link on their Facebook page. You can find them um, through the, um, their websites also. So if there aren't any other questions, then I think we're gonna wrap this up. And um, there were several on here comments that said thank you for the very informative uh, presentation and you know it was our honor we really wanted to share with you um uh, these techniques the the skills that we have been blessed with and it's our purpose to share with you so thank you everyone and i look forward to next heart talk have a magnificent Great. evening Bye. take care of yourself Bye. Bye.